November 5th, and now I'm 30, riding down my highway with my friends at my side. My life without them wouldn't be complete. They are my joy and pride. Who is Chris Jenner? Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner is the matriarch of one of the most polarizing families in America. Did you trademark the term momager? I did. Why does everything have to be that Chris is such a bitch and an ass? The problem is you. Problem. you. Yes, it is. I had a boyfriend. I think you so had a fiance. Was, yeah, well. And then you start dating Robert. Yeah, well, yeah. What an annoying woman. Are you sure you want to get remarried yeah, right now? Chris Jenner had control over the entire situation and orchestrated everything. Did you help Kim release her sex tape? <laughs> her mama made us go shoot it for safety. She watched the mother and said, hey, we're going to go with the first one because the first one is better. The most dishonest family in media. And I'm so optimistic that this is going to make the community a better place. Your mother is pimping her children. We're going through receipts tonight, Chris. Momager, a show business manager who is also the performer's mother. Or as Urban Dictionary likes to call it, a parent who pushes their child or children into show business at the risk of their mental and physical health and without any regard to their social development or privacy. Well, this ought to be fun. So we've all heard the phrase, the devil works hard, but Kris Jenner works harder, right? Well, Kris Jenner has made her family into a multi-million, excuse me, multi-billion dollar empire and shows no signs of slowing down. But at what cost? There's a litany of lawsuits, which we will uncover, alleged frauds, scam, and even an SA case against Kris. And on top of all of that, I wonder, is her involvement with her daughter's lives and her grandchildren healthy? or predatory? Did she literally pimp out Kim Kardashian with an S tape? Is she really running a private cult? We're gonna get into all of this, but first, oh hi there, hello, hello, hi, it's my face again, swoop, 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 eh. <laughs> So, I hope y'all were sticking with me. This is part two of an ongoing series that I am doing, digging through the shady ass business of the Kardashians and the Jenners, covering all of their lies, scams, frauds, and the impact that these scams have had on society. And sidebar, wait till y'all see what I've uncovered in the Kylie Jenner doc coming soon, because holy shite balls with the side of what the f so like every swoop doc, I'm gonna break this down into three parts, the relationships, the money, and the momager. Now, quick disclaimer, y'all, I dug into the depths of the internet on this woman, and when I say her PR team is working overtime, whoo child, all of this shit is heavily monitored by the queen bee herself, and, and that's queen with a K, okay? Just so you know she ain't around here. But because of this, you bet your sweet bippity boppity boop that we're gonna be taking it to Petty University because a bitch has thoughts and I'd never leave you petties in a pinch. Oh no, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all might have noticed something a little different, okay? I'm just saying, should we, should we get into this real quick? <laughs> I am so beyond excited to finally announce that the brand new Petty University fall, winter, and holiday collection is officially here. So please allow me to introduce you to the Dropout Collection. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited right now. The Dropout Collection is for all of you who've ever felt different, maybe an outsider, or felt like you're not enough or you're not seen. I want you to always remember that I see you and you will always have a home here with our Petty University community. The Dropout Collection has 17 new items, four gorgeous colorways that y'all voted on, features completely new designs, even more premium hoodies and sweatshirts than the previous collections. We finally have bottoms and matching sets. Now they all coordinate together so you can mix and match how you would like to build your matching set. And y'all, we have the dopest varsity jacket with a removable hood. I'm so freaking excited. I have worked so hard on this new collection. And now you can finally grab your very own items from the Dropout Collection right now. The shop is linked in the description. It'll also be pinned in the top comment. Grab your items before they sell out like they did the first time and these also make the perfect gifts for the holidays now if y'all just gonna pause and go grab your pieces then you could like skip this section but for those of you want to see some details real quick i'm gonna do that because i know some of you really appreciate that and then we will jump straight into the mess that is chris jenner <laughs> 
So we have the petty dropout design with the winking eye. It's kind of like, eh, or it's kind of like, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then we have the petty dropout with our newest mascot, the melty smiley face. We also have the flagship petty you design featuring a kettle this time, because you know, while others might be sipping the tea, we bring the whole ass kettle, okay, honey? So we finally, finally have petty jogger pants featuring two different embroidered designs. I'm actually wearing one right now. Oh, yes, she's coordinated. So this jogger features the new petty dropout font, and then we have one in dusty pink with the kettle, so you can actually mix and match these with any top across the entire collection. These joggers are hands down the most comfortable, best fitting, most flattering joggers I have ever put on my body. And let me just say, they make that ass look buying it, okay? And we also have our very first ever zip up hoodie. Y'all have been asking, Auntie Swoop delivers. Now all of the printed hoodies and sweatshirts are a brand new ultra premium fabric. They are ridiculously soft and they come in four colorways. Now the three crew neck sweatshirts feature the new melty face petty mascot and comes in jet black with white print, steel gray with blush tone ink, and vanilla milkshake, which again is the perfect neutral for all skin tones. And now for my absolute pride and joy, we have an official Petty University varsity jacket. I have been working on bringing this gorgeous jacket to life for a year. I am so in love and the quality is just it is soft, structured, warm, fully lined inside. It has two exterior pockets, an interior pocket, snap button closures. And my favorite part is that the hood is actually fully removable. Like if you want a hooded look, you just button it on or you can easily remove it for a crew neck look to pair with your favorite Petty U hoodie underneath. Oh, I love this so much. Now we also have two new Petty grad cap dad hats and the beanies child. So we have the new dropout melty smiley face mascot and the petty dropout design for all you petties. Now all of the sizes are in a relaxed fit and several colors go from sizes small to 5XL. And my favorite part is that they're constructed to look great on you across several sizes, meaning if you're unsure or a size is sold out, going up or down a size will still look great. All right, so child, you can pause the video right now. I will still be here when you come back and tap the link in the description to grab your brand new Petty University pieces from the dropout collection and treat yourself because honey you deserve it and again these would make amazing gifts for the holidays coming up they will ship in time I'm just saying I truly hope that you love this collection as much as I do and once again I just I just want to thank all of you for being part of the petty you community thank you truly for supporting a small business for supporting a woman-owned small business and a black owned business and I cherish everything about this so thank you so much all right class in session. Hi, you've reached the office of Kris Jenner, Kim Kardashian's former manager. If you'd like to get Mom. a hold of my ungrateful daughter, Mom. you can call her on her personal and private cell phone. Do, 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 do. I figured we'd do a little fashion show while I get through this. Okay, so we're gonna be getting into all things mommy dearest or mommy nearest, if you will. And when I say Kris has some skeletons in her closet, let's just say that I hope her cleaning staff is well paid. Unlike Kim Kardashian's, who I guess she never pays. Oh, it's tough being a billionaire in these streets. You know what I mean? It's just a, the struggle is so real. <laughs> Some of this shit is dirty. Not even the wholesome powers of Zendaya and Tom Holland's relationship could purify this shit show. But before we get into the schemes, dreams, and obscene, we need to introduce the mom, the myth, the legend herself, Miss Kris Jenner. So Kris Houghton, 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 I don't know how to say it, Houghton, Houghton, We're, I'm just going with Houghton. Kris Houghton was the eldest of two children born to Mary Jo Shannon and Robert True Houghton, Houghton on November 5th, 1955 in good old San Diego, California. Now her mother owned a children's clothing store like mother like daughter, more on that later. And her father was an engineer who unfortunately suffered from addiction and alcoholism. Uh, now by the 
the age of seven, her parents divorced, leaving Chris and her literal sister that none of us knew about, cause that's a thing we'll get to, to be raised by her mother and eventual stepfather, Stephen Shannon. Now I know, I know we are 30 seconds in and we already got some shit to unpack, but give me a second, okay? So when Chris was 19, her birth father passed in a car crash and at 20 years old, she became a flight attendant for American Airlines. Oh, she was actually engaged to a professional golfer. I had a boyfriend. I think you so had a fiance. Was, yeah, well. Caesar Sanudo at 19 years old, the first in a string of relationships to come. But yes, let's get back to her sister, right? So obviously this doc is about Chris and not Karen. Wait, hold up, Karen. I just realized Chris's parents named them Chris with a K and Karen with a K, K and K. And then Chris had Chloe, Courtney, Kim, Kendall, Kylie. What in the actual whole grain, gluten-free, sugar-free English breakfast obsession is with all of these Ks. Like, bitch, 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 bitch. I always, you know, I always like kind of wondered like what the thought process was, right? Like, especially after the first two kids were born and you named them K, you know, and then like you're pregnant with the third. Like, I just wonder like, was there ever a conversation like, well, shit, what if this is my last child? That would be three Ks, you know, K, K, yeah, are we doing this? Steven, Steven, is this a good idea? Okay, Jennifer, Je did you co-sign on this, Jennifer? I'm just wondering. That seems like you could get caught up in a little bit of a mess. Oh. Oh, that. Sorry, that was my sidebar. Let's continue. <laughs> All right, we're gonna just like flux capacitor our way forward in time to bring you up to speed on this absolutely bizarre sibling dynamic. So Karen, who resides in San Marcos, a whopping two hours from Calabasas, California, where the Kardashian compound currently sits, has pretty much avoided the limelight, instead choosing to write two cookbooks and similar to her older sister, work as a flight attendant. So in Chris's 2011 autobiography, she actually mentions her sister for the first time which before y'all roast me, okay, I'm really not out here trying to like line Chris's pockets any more than necessary. So forgive me for not reading her life story, okay? I do not keep up with the Kardashians in that way. But anyways, in 2011, Chris writes, we loved each other and we were there for each other through thick and thin. And to this day, we are a part of each other's lives. Can someone tell me why Chris said we loved each other in past tense, but then says we're in each other's lives, present tense? That doesn't, this is just the tense don't connect, okay? It don't make sense. But also, like, I guess, how sweet? I had a marshmallow stand and... I had to put my pants up. All right! But what's not so sweet was how in 2014, Karen clapped back on Facebook. Which, you know what? Grab your grad caps, okay? So, I know, I know it's a little early, but go ahead and roll the intro. <laughs> Bitch! Okay, your name is literally Karen, and you went on a Facebook tirade blowing your beef in the wind for the whole ass internet to see on Facebook? Like you took a Jenner on Facebook? <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, but I don't think of like Kris Jenner checking her Facebook, you know what I mean? Anyways, Miss Karen said, and I quote with my whole petty chest, when you express a loving family and family values and a close family and my mom wants to live in La Jolla, Buy her a condo, Chris. I don't understand her. I never will. It's just her personality. So I guess she was implying that her mom, their mom wanted a condo and Chris wouldn't buy her one because if that's true, I guess, you know, condos are expensive for multi-billionaires, you know? Like, you, it's, uh, you can't, I, <laughs> but you know, I guess Karen's face is up for grabs, right? <laughs> yes, I said what I said and it's not what you think, but in 2016, the beef was, I guess, temporarily squashed. Karen got a facelift to, quote, look like my beautiful sister, Chris, end quote. And y'all, no shade here, it's your body, do what you want to do with it. But does anyone else find that kind of odd? Even the way they did her makeup after the photo is just giving, I just, I, <sighs> you, you know, never mind. Okay, class dismissed. 
Honestly though, Chris left Karen to care for their aging mother by herself when we all know it's what, like a 10 minute private jet flight down the coast for Chris. So what did Karen do? Well, Karen karen in the most Karen way that she knows how to care and she left a voicemail. Now, just a little warning here, there is a lot of yelling and it gets a little brutal. My initial thought was, why bring it up now? Well, in a lot of ways, and I've been like thinking about this a lot, right? It might come down to a little thing we know as sibling rivalry. So sibling rivalry is a type of competition or animosity among siblings, whether blood related or not. And it turns out this can start early and I found this fascinating. So siblings aged three to seven engage in some sort of conflict multiple times an hour, but with some of them experiencing lingering jealousy for years to come. And according to Sylvia Rim, a psychologist, author, and director of the Family Achievement Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, once a person has established themselves as very successful, either a sibling is tired of hearing how successful a sister or brother is, or they might be basking in the glory of and enjoying the vicarious success. Sound familiar? Maybe. I don't know. I wonder. What do you guys think? Is that what's going on with Karen? But hey, you know what? At least your faces match now? Like, I don't I don't know, dude. Now let's move on to some more fun things, like frauds and scams. <laughs> Yay! I had a boyfriend. I think you so had a fiance. Was, yeah, well... And then you start dating Robert. Yeah, well, yeah. Do, do, do. Uh, okay, okay, so where were we? So, all right, okay, the engagement to the professional golfer. So we're rewinding it a little bit. Now, as you might guess, her love story with Caesar was cut short. Tragic, truly. I had a boyfriend. I think you so had a fiance. Was, yeah, well. And then you start dating Robert. Yeah, well, yeah. But who was her knight in shining armor? One Robert Kardashian. Robert was, a, he was irresistible. And y'all, I just, I gotta point this out. Robert and Chris met when he was 28 and she was just 17. 17. She would have just gotten her driver's license and he's the reason that their relationship with Caesar failed in the first place because these two were carrying out a whole ass affair under her fiance's nose. And two proposals from Robert later and Chris accepted with them tying the knot when Chris was just 22 years old on July 8th, 1978. Now the wedding, lavish. The videos, immaculate 70s. The marriage, well, okay. So while it did end, it didn't end well. Like, you know how Chris had an affair with Robert? Well, turns out she has a bit of a knack for adultery, this time with soccer player, Todd Waterman. For a minute, I just want to talk to you. About what? About something. I just want to close the door because I don't want the kids to hear me. About what? They can hear. I don't want them to hear this. Um, I just went and had a tennis lesson, and I see this guy that kind of looked familiar. Yeah. And I said to the instructor, who is that? And he goes, Todd Waterman. No way. 20 years later? Why would she even talk to him? Yeah, so Todd actually managed to come back into the narrative to add some spice to keeping up with the Kardashians. So Chris started popping out the Kardashians one year after her and Robert got married. And this man was the breadwinner, the money man, the one with the cash. Add an 11 year age difference and the stress of running a household and shit was just kind of bound to get messy. In Chris's own words, the affair made her feel young, attractive, sexy, and alive. But Robert had caught wind 
point of it and hired a private investigator to gather evidence, which like, that's just some rich people shit. Anyways, the two were divorced by 1991 with Chris swiftly moving on to her next partner, former Olympian Caitlyn Jenner. After five months of dating, the two were married just one month after the divorce was finalized, but something else was coming, something no one could have predicted, of course, and it would change the media landscape forever. In 1994, news of the unaliving of Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown broke. And as I mentioned in my Kim Kardashian doc, this is what we consider to be the world's introduction to the idea of the Kardashians, the OJ Simpson trial. Now, for a quick recap, Robert Kardashian, Chris's now ex-husband at the time and father to Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Rob, was a longtime friend of OJ's with Chris spending time with the Simpsons throughout their marriage. I'm just gonna say it, like by all accounts, Chris and Nicole were friends and like probably close friends. They were seen vacationing together with their families and sharing dinner at galas across the LA area. And when Robert agreed to take the case and defend his longtime friend, Chris found herself between a rock and a hard place. And honestly, y'all, like I can't imagine what this must have been like. You know, she and I were supposed to have lunch the next day the day after she was murdered. And um, she said she wanted to show me some things and talk about what was in her safe. And so now, unfortunately, it all makes sense that that's probably what she wanted to reveal to me that next day, which broke my heart because I always feel horrible that I didn't pay enough attention. Even on Good Morning America in 1995, when asked about her relationship with her ex-husband, Chris said that they only discussed their children and nothing else. And like, I know y'all come here for the petty, okay? But just kind of like think about this for a second. Like your close friend was unalived, allegedly by someone you trusted, someone your kids spent time with, and your ex-husband and father of your children is now defending him. That sounds pretty fucking awful. I think that this has been a really tough year for, you know, tough 15 months for all of us. And not only have we lost Nicole, we've- Now, Robert and Chris managed to repair their relationship, eventually becoming besties by the end of his life. But Caitlin, that's another story. Who, Caitlin. Okay, we're gonna jump right into this intense story, but real quick, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Upside, who's here to save you money on the things that you already buy. So I don't know about you, but this this inflation sucks. Like, honey, have you seen the cost increase on basic food at the grocery store? Like, since when is a basic ass loaf of bread eight dwellas? Okay, eight dwellas, really? And like, I'd literally just moved to an area where I could walk to stores just so I wouldn't have to pump gas because gas prices are the devil. Okay, prove me wrong. But that's also why I started using the app Upside. Upside is a free money-saving app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or eats at restaurants. Basically now with every purchase that I make there, I'm earning cash back right into my pocket and you can too. And all you do is download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. And if you use my code SWOOP, you'll automatically get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. So like if you buy $10 worth of gas, Gas, you'll instantly get $5 back. After you download the free app, you then claim an offer on Upside for whatever you're buying, check in at the business, pay as usual with your credit or debit card, and you get paid. It is literally that easy. And I can still get my credit card rewards points and also get up to three times more cash back with Upside at the same time. Then you can cash out anytime directly to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for like Amazon and other brands. So to get cash back right now on the things you're already paying for, download the free Upside app and use code SWOOP to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Okay, back to the doc. Guess we should have a little ceremony. Renew our vows. Come on in here, honey. I just up the cake, so just hang on. All right, we've got the kettle now. By 1997, Chris and Caitlin had welcomed two additional daughters, Kendall and Kylie, you may have heard of them, who, trust me, they will be getting their own swoop docs because what the fuck? 
Given Chris's lack of finances and Caitlin's fading stardom, Chris began managing her partner, booking spots as a motivational speaker, and launching their own line of stair climbing fitness equipment as a way to earn enough income to support six children. And wouldn't you know it, it worked. Fast forward to 2011 and the happy couple celebrate 20 years of wedded bliss together, renewing their vows in Bora Bora on an exclusive episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Ew is we should have a little ceremony, renew our vows. Come on in here, honey. I just up the cake, so just hang on, Romeo. What an annoying woman. But by 2013, there was trouble in paradise. The pair announced their separation with Caitlyn moving to Malibu and Chris would find a new partner by 2014. But before we introduce him, let's talk about cheating again because bloody hell, okay. At this point, Chris appears to me to be a serial cheater. And we've obviously, we've been doing like the Ned Fulmer, Try Guys situation in a multi-part series. I've asked you guys quite a lot of questions about what your feelings are about someone who cheats. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments about what you think about someone who cheats multiple times. Does that say something about their character to you or not? If they're cheating on their partners, do you think that applies to the rest of their life? How they conduct business, how they raise kids? Do you think it's only exclusive to the relationship? I would love to know your thoughts. Leave me the comments. But at this point, again, I look at her, it's kind of like a serial cheater or at the very least jumps from one successful person to another with little time between relationships and I don't know if it's like a codependency thing or a business strategy or something else though knowing conniving Chris business was probably a motivating factor because being a boss and being in charge is firing someone can we not do that um, that's how you view it. <laughs> but according to Alicia M. Walker, Associate Professor of Sociology at Missouri State University, and this is fascinating, a lot of the time the reasons for cheating are physical, sometimes they're emotional, and sometimes, as much as we don't want to admit this or know this, sometimes it's just a matter of somebody having an opportunity. There's a lot of data showing that a woman will have an affair with a coworker and are more likely to report that my marriage is great and I'm super satisfied. I literally saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. That is interesting to me, but wait, it gets more interesting. So Walker also discovered that most wives see cheating or having an affair as an exercise in power. Traditionally, old fashioned chivalry feeds into socially accepted norms that can put women into subordinate roles like early on in the relationship. Uh, for women who cheat, infidelity can kind of feel like a means of taking back that power or choosing who they want pursuing them rather than being chosen. Kind of interesting, right? Or, you know, maybe she's just a gold digger, pure and simple. We could wada, we could wada, we could wada, we could wada. But I have a third theory. She shows hypergamy tendencies. So according to a London psychotherapist, although hypergamy sounds more scientific than the almost offensive gold digger, both point at meeting personal needs at someone else's expense. Essential differences are that hypergamy points at someone who is more interested in the status and power than the often accompanying money, whereas a gold digger is less interested in the status and power, but is easily satisfied if they're is a financial reward. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say that Chris falls more on the hypergamy side. While she prefers having money, as do most all of us, we do live in a society, uh, she's also cautious about letting someone have full control over her finances and livelihood. So in my opinion, I think it's about status. Like it's about power. <laughs> No one knows for sure unless you're, you know, Chris herself. And she's admitted that she felt sexy and desired in her affairs. Um, I feel like I'm at the gynecologist's office. But maybe she's more of a mastermind than we expected. You know, kind of always two steps ahead. So here comes Corey. C -c 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 Corey. <sighs> I thought it was time we bust out the jacket. All right, Corey Gamble is Chris's longtime boyfriend with the two starting their relationship all the way back in 2014, around a year after she and Caitlyn Jenner split. So Corey is a business executive and talent manager. He's kind of a man of mystery, but he's known for his work with Justin Bieber and other artists. Originally from Hotlanta, Georgia, he is now best known for being Chris's arm candy. Oh, and, and did I mention that 
that he's literally the same age as Kim Kardashian. You know, Kim, Chris's daughter. She's dating someone who's the same age as her daughter. For those of y'all who aren't like trying to attempt some like mental math, like, you know, put your calculators down. Okay, Professor Petty is here for you. Corey is 25 years younger than Chris. And for what it's worth, it doesn't seem like anyone other than Chris is a fan. Like between the SNL shade. The one thing I'm really proud of is that no one could ever call me a gold digger. Honestly, I'm not even sure how you become one. So I asked my mom's boyfriend, Corey. And blatant ignorance of his existence. Do you like this uh, couch? Yeah. It's comfortable. Oh, oh and they just kept one of the tables. Well, you, you have on your fancy shoes. Would you rather have no spray tans for the rest of your life or never get your nails done? I hate getting spray no tans. No spray tans. Me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, challenges. yeah. <laughs> It seems like he's just like there, but you know, hey, they are adults and there are worse things like, you know, the sheer number of businesses Chris has left in her wake. So, you know, grab a three course meal because this is gonna be a long one. Mom! What? You just spent $4,000 on a dress? I couldn't find anything else to wear. Okay, you know, I think I could use some music to pump me up. Uh, this looks promising. November 5th. And now I'm 30, riding down my highway with my friends at my side. My life without them wouldn't be complete. They are my joy and pride. So we're digging into the businesses. We'll start off with Smooch. This is Chris and Courtney's children's clothing boutique. So opened in 2004 in the footsteps of Chris's own mother. Smooch was open and like popular, I guess, like for six years before eventually closing its doors. And the reason, well, it depends. Like Courtney's statement claimed that it was to spend more time with her son, Mason Disick. But I have a feeling it might be the lawsuit that was ever so casually swept under the rug. Ah yes, another day, another Kardashian lawsuit. A year after Smooch smooched its last smooch, Courtney and the boutique were sued for a whopping $2,331.23 to be exact, because I am a thorough bitch, for failing to pay goods, wares, merchandise, or services rendered. Now, I know like it's chump change for these people, which is why you probably haven't heard of the suit in the first place. Kim, would you Stop taking pictures of yourself. Your sister's going to jail. Rumor has it Courtney paid up, but Smooch bit the dust for good after. Now, in 2006, a couple years into Smooch, the Kardashian sisters decided to open a more high-end store called Dash. I cover Dash in the absolute circus that is my Kim Kardashian doc, but I will give you a little taste. <laughs> Dash was a luxury consignment store populated by celebrity closet cast-offs and the occasional Kardashian employee. If it sounds familiar, you most likely know it from its heavy features in the earlier seasons of Keeping Up With The Kardashians as Kim, Khloe, and Kourtney managed the business together. Yeah, I closed too, but not before we got one of my favorite Yelp reviews of all times. <clears throat> Charles P of the Miami store gave it a one star saying, their Sears line was better. But now it's 2007, it's time to start keeping up with the Kardashians. So how the hell did we get here? Well, Ryan Seacrest and the Osbournes, that is how. <laughs> Man, the 2000s really were a f fever dream. Anyways, in 2007, a casting director friend came to visit the Kardashian-Jenner compound and was met with chaos after suggesting that Chris should pitch her literal family as a reality TV show. And Chris simply replied, get me a meeting. One meeting with Ryan Seacrest and 48 hours later, keeping up with the Kardashians was spawned from the depths of hell. I mean, born. All right, we're ready. No, no, no. We're back here. The wind, you guys? Change. Oh. Awful. No, that is not cute. Yeah, 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 I need someone to make me laugh. Where's Kim? Kim is always late. Oh. Get out of her way. Stop. Jealous. Enough. Stop. Enough. 
that's it. We're done. Uh, with Chris as an executive producer and 20 seasons on E! and two seasons on Hulu and honestly an ungodly amount of money. It's single-handedly the one thing we can point to when it comes to answering the age-old question. Why the hell do we know who the Kardashians are? It's that show. And turns out the British royal family knows who they are too. Like the Kardashians, the royal family is keenly aware that on their very existence relies on the approval and attention of admirers. This codependency is directly responsible for the very public airing of the family's current difficulties. Thanks to the Kardashians, the camera is now always on. Chris has her own production company, Jenner Communications. It was founded in 2007. It's the home base of everything Kardashian, including each of the family businesses, which Chris has a sizable stake in. I don't know if people realize all of that. Now, according to Forbes, Jenner, who sits on the board of each of her kids' businesses, gets 10% of gross revenue, not net, from every product, TV show, or modeling gig in which her family participates in exchange for helping build out staffing and supply chains. First of all, She's our mom. we have to hire a manager. So regardless, someone is gonna get that. Mm -hmm. No one will fight harder for you than your own mother. Mm -hmm. She knows us, she knows all of our moods. We vibe. Okay. It worked. You know what's like not so quaint though? Well, the unpaid internships that Jenner Communications offers. Because again, life is tough for these billionaires, okay? They can't, you know, we can't expect them to like pay for the people who are doing the work. <laughs> so I'm gonna need to. Running errands, organizing, donation tally, helping with kids, playroom, motorized cars, etc., grocery shopping, helping with dog, looking for these three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's one of the, uh, the posts, looking for the free internships to do all of this work three days a week for you. Here's another one. Please do not apply if you don't have the following. Must currently be enrolled in school as a student. That's how they get away with this shit. This is an unpaid internship and will receive credit through school only. Must have a car. Prefer someone living in Los Angeles full time, not just for the summer. Ability to work Monday and Wednesday, 9.30 to 6 p.m. I guess they had to drop Friday because what the fuck student wants to do that on a Friday? I'm like doing your laundry or whatever. I don't know, but this sounds like quite a lot of work still. And somehow it's credit for school. I don't really know what you're teaching, but okay. Now here's one from an actual intern who then complained about it online for reasons. A lot of stupid and pointless busy work doesn't even qualify as an internship. Immoral people, immoral business practices, advice to management, don't call this an internship. Classifying this as an unpaid internship is illegal as the position is not educational and you are doing the same work as actual assistants and runners are doing. Thus, it should be either a paid internship or paid position, not unpaid internship. Bitch, 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 bitch. That's really interesting, right? The idea that like an internship is supposed to be teaching you something and if it's like you're running to get coffee, you're walking the dog and you're doing the laundry, I'm not really certain what this is teaching a student because this is shit they probably already know how to do. Here's another one. What we offer. The internship is unpaid, but we do offer school credit, exclamation points. You must be enrolled in school and be able to provide the necessary paperwork required, useful on the job experience, the ability to work alongside professional staff, both independently and collaboratively. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that took all my breath. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, Wage, and Hour Division on what makes an internship, they say, quote, the extent to which the internship provides training that would be similar to that which would be given in an educational environment, including the clinical and other hands-on training provided by educational institutions. This ain't it. Next. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. Oh goody, it's the KKK, I mean the California Community Church, again. Now I watch my wife work all day, get 30 bags together for you ungrateful sons of bitches, and all I can hear is criticize, criticize, criticize. Now, I know I covered this a bit in the previous Kim Kardashian doc as she is tied to this 
fraud pod of scammy mcscam pants thing. This church with a capital K, I'm giving it a K because why not? Better keep it on brand, Chris. But this church has played such an integral part in the famous family's life that Chris Jenner is a co-founder of the California Community Church, formerly known as the Life Change Church. And you too can be a congregant of this prestigious holy church for the low, low price of one thousand dollars a month, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta pay an entry fee, an exit fee, a monthly fee. You got all the fees you gotta pay if you wanna go to this church. <laughs> like this shit is so foul to me. Like I just kinda like, you know it's bad when not even Pete Davidson is willing to tattoo it on his body, okay? He ain't putting church on his body. That should tell everyone right there, if Pete don't tattoo it, you don't do it, okay? <laughs> Okay, so for the uninitiated, churches in the United States are not required to report their earnings to the IRS, meaning whoever is in charge gets a major tax break. And worse in this situation, the money that's given to the church goes right into Chris's pocket. So like take Kim's contributions, right? If Kim gives 10% of her yearly earnings, which is approximately a whopping $18 million, that would be at least 1.8 8 million in tax deductions to a church that her mother founded where the donations go straight to her mother's pockets. In Jesus name, amen. <laughs> I am living for a blush moment. Okay, so we've hit media companies, children's clothing stores, and churches. How about Sears? Attention, all girls that are having a bad day, please report to the Kardashian department. Shoes fix everything. Shoes are everything. <laughs> you heard it here first, okay? Cheap mass produced clothing hawked by celebrities now at your local Sears and that's not just me being petty, like real customers felt the same way. Quote, ugh, I did not just pay $60 to wear this Kardashian collection dress that's already ripped in three places. What a mistake I did here. Guys, please don't waste your money on the Kardashian collection line. The skirt I ordered looks nothing like it did online. Absolutely cheaply made and not worth the money. It's amazing billionaires selling stuff that has rips and tears and holes in it. Now in 2011, a report slammed the Kardashian family for allegedly manufacturing some of their collections in foreign sweatshops where the workers are quote, abused and virtually imprisoned. Charles from the Institute of the Global Labor and Human Rights had this to say, not only are celebrities like the Kardashians taking advantage of these workers, they are holding hands with a government that spits on democracy and women's rights. <laughs> Love that. Uh, but the clothing lines didn't stop there. Like, can I get some QVC in the house? because Chris wants to make everyone into a boss babe. So excited about Fashion Night Out this coming year because that's when I get to debut my line on QVC. I think it's really important for women to feel good and look good and the one thing that I've always loved is how easy that I feel that my own style is. I can put on a blazer and pants and a shirt and be there from the beginning of the day through the end of the night. And I think to inspire other women to do the same is really great. In her own words, I spent the first half of my life being a mom, having six kids. So now I like to look good and I've learned a lot in my 50 some odd years of trial and error. This is a culmination of everything that I love that's easy with a few pieces thrown in for night and cocktail because every girl needs something to go out in. Well, let's just say you can't find her clothes on QVK. I mean QVC anymore, they're, they're, they're gone. They're gone, people are over it. But it appears that in 2011 was a big year for the momager. So she also released her first book, an autobiography titled Kris Jenner and All Things Kardashian. Now in the book, Kris details a part of her personality that begins to become more and more clear, at least the way I see it. And that's like her need for control. I have to have everything in my life completely organized and perfect. Otherwise I am a complete mess. Okay, deep breaths, everyone. 
we've almost made it through all of Chris's business ventures, or at least all the ones that are public that we could find and that I could cover without this being like five hours, but I saved one of the best for last. Chris. Yes, the talk show that was doomed from the start. So in 2013, Fox gave Chris the old college try and ran a six week trial over the summer, eventually deciding to not pick up the show. Chris, I wonder why. So Kim just had her baby, everybody. Congratulations, Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. When we come back, you know all those crazy rumors about Kim, Kanye, and baby North, right? Well, I'm gonna set you straight coming up. <laughs> Okay. No. You know, honestly, let's just hear what the senior VP of Fox television station said. I think she was pretty uninteresting on camera. That was one where 20th century television tried to capitalize on a name. When the camera was on, she looked not just like a deer in the headlights, but like a deer that already got hit. Oh shit, television is brutal, man. That was, whew, I mean, whew, yeah, okay. The last big biz is one called Safely. Have you all heard of that? Safely, you love our stuff. You sound like Whitney. Thank you. Uh, well, not Whitney Houston. You sound like my girlfriend, Whitney Dunbar from high school, and she was terrible. Oh. So first things first, it was originally a project between Chris, Emma Grede, and Chrissy Teigen, who later backed out after the bullying allegations came out about her, cause you know, she's all class, that one. <laughs> But Safely is a series of plant-based cleaners that don't smell like cleaners, what, whatever that means. Toilet cleansers. I guess so you're asking Safely hover over the pot. <laughs> oh, he's been really bloated today. Currently, Chris owns 7% of the company and it's made an undisclosed sum of money. But don't worry, friends. I think, I think Chris is doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> now I have been working on a doc fully dedicated to the infamous Kardashian S tape she made with Ray J, so stay tuned. It is so wild and so effed up. Like I had no idea about half the shit that went down with that tape that launched the Kardashian empire. So we're going to get into all of it. But given the recent allegations against Chris made by Ray J. Her mama made us go shoot it for safety. She watched the mother and said, hey, we're gonna go with the first one because the first one is better. Yeah, I feel like I have to say like something in this doc, but again, it deserves a full thing because it is so twisted. It is worse than like many things that I've covered. Anyways, currently Ray J is insinuating that Chris orchestrated the S tape leak and went so far as to watch different versions of the tape to determine which tape made Kim, her daughter, look best. And Chris has also never let it fade into the background. From episode one of Keeping Up With The Kardashians to now, Chris has made made sure that the tape makes a reappearance whenever it's necessary. Tyra Banks has asked me to be on her show next week and I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, that's so cool, I love Tyra. I know, how cool would that be? There's just one little catch. What? You'd have to talk about the tape. Now, I think like for a momager who's made her fortune on selling S via her daughters, it, it kind of tracks, like it's very on brand for Chris. And I kind of, I say that with my whole petty chest, okay? Like between somewhat forcing Kim to pose for Playboy, which we will dig into in the S tape doc to having an obsession with collecting grandchildren like Pokemon cards. Chris knows the brand and knows how to sell it. I mean, just ask Kim. Times have changed since my first Playboy shoot. This sounds so bad, but I feel like my mom talked me into doing my first Playboy shoot. I really did. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> But you know, for real, like Chris seems to always have her eye on the prize. And like for f sake, like she even pits her own daughters against each other when it comes to competing for the favorite child. I was gonna ask this question anyway. Oh. Am I your favorite child? <laughs> yes. True. <laughs> Oh my God! I already knew the answer. I mean, the speed at which you answered. I know. Like honestly, when parents do this, it's just kind of like gross to me. Like even if it's all fun and games, like that shit can cut a child, even an adult child, deep. It's Mom, suck my. 
But hey, you know, why wouldn't Kylie be the favorite? Like she's the youngest and allegedly the most business savvy of all of them. You know, the self-made billionaire all by herself, no help from her family, no nepotism, totally self-made. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no silver spoon in this mouth. You know, except for that one time when Kylie was stripped of her billionaire title by Forbes for being a total fraud. But you know, well, playing a game of whack fuck here. Whack. Now, Kylie was dropped from the billionaires list in 2020 with Forbes posting that Kylie's tax returns had been doctored, a claim that representatives for Kylie and Kris Jenner denied. Kris was apparently upset about the story, but when asked about it at the photo shoot, Jenner replied, I have no idea, but thank you. <laughs> Listen, catch me using that every single time someone says something that I don't want to acknowledge from now on, okay? I have no idea, but thank you. Now, it's too bad that that didn't work with Chris's business school scam. Oh wait, I bet you didn't know about that one now, did you? Like, honestly, the synopsis of this sounds like a fever dream generated by an AI that was fed trending Twitter topics from like the past three years. It goes a little something like, Trump sues Chris Jenner over business school. I fucking- Hello, hello mother- Hello, mother- I'm not joking here. So Legacy Business School was billed as a business school that would teach strapping young professionals how to make their financial dreams come true or some shit, I don't know. Hey Mr. Scott, what you gonna do? What you gonna do make your dreams come true? But what I do know is that this crap school charged $105,000 for annual tuition and touted an exclusive dinner with Kris Jenner for the first 100 students who attend. Oh golly gee, where do I sign up? Nowhere. Turns out Kris's big investment was a bad one. Like not only was the school a redone European school of economics, but the school CEO was literally sued for not paying debts before this even happened. In 2010, this school signed a 20 year lease for office space at Trump Tower in Midtown Manhattan. Now, however, comma, in 2020, the school owed over $198,000 in rent, resulting in Trump's team literally requesting a sheriff to escort the squatters off the property. Oh, and the cherry on top, they actually never even applied for the right permits to accredit the school. So I hope you had fun setting your money on fire if you attended, like y'all. I just think we have to do something really crazy tonight. I don't know, like maybe Kanye took his Donda Academy inspiration from Chris. Are you, um, you know, just start an absolute trash school, charge way too much, make sure it's unaccredited and doesn't actually count for shit, slap your name on it and call yourself a genius. So. Well played, Chris and Kanye. Well played. So Kanye is bothered for whatever reason, and he wants to make it known that he doesn't want Chris dictating anything that his children do. So pretty much he posted a picture of a woman who used to be Kylie's personal assistant, and he captioned it, don't let Chris make you do Playboy like she made Kylie and Kim do. Now, y'all know we don't shy away from complicated topics and dangerous behavior on this channel, but given Kanye's recent behavior and what appears to be deteriorating mental health. I could probably make a whole ass doc on him too, but his relationship with Chris is strange to say the least. So when Kanye publicly endorsed Trump, for example, in 2018, she played it safe saying, Kanye is an amazing son-in-law. He's an amazing dad and husband and friend and brother-in-law. I think what I really want to do is be there to help him be the best version of himself that he can be. So it turns out the feeling though wasn't mutual for Kanye. Like in a string of now deleted but forever memorialized on the internet tweets, Kanye decided to dump a whole ass vat of accusations like on, on her, around her, on everybody. I'm not entirely sure, but here are some of them. I put my life on God that North's mom would never photograph her doing Playboy and that's on God. I'm at the ranch, come and get me. He's obviously talking here about Kim doing Playboy and him not wanting Kim to make 
their daughter do that as well and potentially Chris have a part in that. Here's another quote. I put my life on the line for my children that North's mother would never sell her S tape. So again, Kanye is calling out the stuff that Kim did at the likely behest of Chris. Here's another one. Everybody knows the movie Get Out is about me. Now, my first thing when I read that one, I was like, well, does Jordan Peele know that? Does he know he wrote it about you? But it was an interesting thing, right? He's implying that, you know, that Chris, that Kim, they, you know, sucked in the black man and to, for the purposes of what's sucking and draining his blackness from him and then discarding him. Now, I have done quite an extensive bit of research about the cultural appropriation of the Kardashians and the Jenners, which is rampant, um, as well as manipulating and using marginalized communities. It is a thing. I have considered doing a full doc just on that. It's a, it's a far more serious topic in that regards, but I think maybe we'll do that one a little bit later. But he tweeted some more things. West children will never do Playboy West. White supremacy at its highest, no cap. And here are some text messages he sent to Chris. This yay, you ready to talk now or are still avoiding my calls? So obviously there was something going on there. And he texts again, this yay, you want to talk or go to war? So again, obviously there's going to be tension within families, just that's that, right? That's with like every single family on the planet. Um, and then of course, when you add in celebrity, it, it puts a whole new layer on it. And then when you add mental health stuff, it puts another layer upon a layer upon a layer. But this does have me and I think a lot of people curious about what types of things does Kanye feel Chris was doing to him, to his children and to the family. And that's why I, I continually question her involvement in her children's lives and her grandchildren's lives. Because again, it seems like everything is business. Everything is opportunity, everything is something to be monetized, and she has done that obviously well. Plat multi-billion dollar enterprise that she's got going here, but again, did she pimp her daughter to start it? We're gonna get into that, into the whole S-tape doc uh, another time. Now, Chris didn't reply publicly, but according to a source close to the family, Chris has done nothing but try to help Kanye and mediate the tension between him and Kim. Chris is really hurt by his comments and she let him know this. Chris is sick and tired of Kanye's public attacks on the family and thinks it's unacceptable to bring the kids into the situation. You know, I guess like we all kind of miss the old Kanye, but as for what she's going to do about it, the most she could do is sue and well, you know, Chris loves to sue people actually, like call it a pastime, honestly. Like it, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, your ass is on the legal chopping block. Quote, I don't care how much money somebody might have if they have nothing. Some people think, oh, I don't have any money and they're not going to sue me. Well, we'll take Make payments. We'll garner those wages for, you know, the next 10 years. But I just think that people don't think it's a foolish thing to do. Well, burn those bridges, queen, I guess. I know we've talked quite a lot on this channel about male victims being just as valid as female and non-binary, but you know, society is still playing catch up in how they perceive women abusers. So Kris Jenner has been accused of SAing her former bodyguard. And I feel like hardly anyone even knows this. Like the media just sweeps it under the rug and many people just don't take it seriously. But the allegations to me are disgusting. So if the allegations are true in recognition of the survivor and what he endured. I want you to hear it as it was reported in his own words. So on October 22nd, 2017, quote, while he was riding in the passenger seat of Jenner's Bentley that morning, she placed her right hand on the inside upper left thigh and groin area in a manner that was overtly sexually offensive. Jenner caused her right hand to move up the upper inner left thigh and groin area while caressing the plaintiff. He was shocked and offended and tried to shift away from her groping only to have Jenner's right hand make contact with his inner groin and genital area. Now, there was no public outcry, like very little press. And like most people are saying like, oh, who cares, right? Like he probably liked it. But imagine if the roles were reversed here. Imagine if Chris came out with those allegations against her male 
male bodyguard saying that he did the exact same thing and repeatedly attempted and succeeded at groping her against her will. Like, I think the public response would be quite different, right? Now, in September of 2018, Chris Jenner, quote, began intentionally retaliating against him for his complaints concerning unwanted S advances and other harassment, namely by cutting his work hours and assignments. McWilliams was told that he was suspended from shifts with Jenner, but that he would keep working with Kardashian. Ultimately, McWilliams claimed he was wrongfully terminated in September 2019 because of his harassment complaints. Now we also have an abuse of power at play where Chris, the employer, yields the power over the subordinate who she SAs allegedly and then harassed and ultimately cuts off his source of income as retribution for coming forward with his story about what happened. Now, this whole thing kind of gives me big like Cardi B energy. Like remember when she admitted to drugging men? She literally admitted to it and stealing from them and all kinds of people just laughed and told her to, you know, like get that bag, honey, work these men. Like, yeah, that that's not cute, it's illegal and dangerous, it's a double standard, and it puts vulnerable people and victims at more risk. Like there is no difference here just because the victim is a man. All right, I gotta get my grad cap on for this one. Now, the other major lawsuit has to do with another figure in the public eye, one Black China. Now, if you're not sure who I'm referring to, allow me to make your acquaintance. Yo, you have serious anger issues. Um, how, how am I gonna grab your Why are you yelling, you psycho? What's wrong with Look, you? Look, cause it's aggravating. Take the tongue ring out and relax. And no, mind breathe. your business and relax. So son Robert Kardashian started dating Black China in 2016, later announcing that they were both engaged and expecting after a few months together. So anyways, they attempted to have a spin-off show, but split up in 2017 after the arrival of their daughter, Dream. Now, earlier this year, the you know the year of our Lord 2020, Black China caused a stir on Twitter by announcing that she was re-establishing her 2017 lawsuit against the Kardashians. Now the claim, defamation, in intentional interference with contract, and intentional interference. Now if y'all have watched my Johnny Depp Amber Heard series or like the Creep Show art series, then you've seen me dive into how hard defamation is to prove. Spoiler alert: very hard. And Black. China was suing the Kardashians over her show being canceled before it even had a chance to start. Now y'all, I don't know how else to say this, like her and Rob were toxic, like between the revenge corn, the DA, and the attempted, oh, I don't know, uh, strangulation and literally holding a firearm to someone's head as a negative funny joke, they don't seem like they were meant to last. <laughs> These people are parents. She lost the lawsuit, I know, shocker. <laughs> Did you trademark the term momager? I did, yeah. Why? Um, I thought it would be such a good opportunity to maybe do something involved with momager. I just, you know, I do that from time to time because I feel like something's important and I want to protect it. So what else do you have trademarks on? <laughs> now, for what it's worth, I think it's unsettling as hell to involve your family in your business affairs, but that's just me. I mean, not entirely, but generally it's a pretty bad idea. They usually advise not doing it as the business has challenges. It often places significant strain on the relationship and it changes the dynamic. Is it dangerous to have a business with a family where you lose kind of the core of, you know, this is my family family versus these are my business partners? No. You don't, not in my case. There are always exceptions and successful family brands. If they can make it work, that's beautiful. But I just often wonder, especially in extreme cases like this, if the Kardashian Jenner kids ever felt like they missed out on having a mom and instead got a business manager. And if that had any effect on their mental development that they would have preferred not to have happened. Like, I don't know. And you've heard it when people say, your mother is pimping her children. I think that's so ridiculous because first of all, She's our mom. we have to hire a manager. So regardless, someone is gonna get that. Mm -hmm. No one will fight harder for you than your own mother. Mm -hmm. She knows us, she knows all of our moods. We vibe, okay. it works. So. so you have never felt exploited by your mother. 
While I definitely think there are a ton of alarming scams, frauds, and we haven't even touched upon the cultural appropriation and gross manipulation of their audiences, which I will cover in another doc, I do have to admit that like Kris Jenner works hard, right? I mean, Kylie cites the momager who's 67 years old as the best example of balancing career and family, saying that, quote, my mom has been the best example I could look up to. She has a hundred kids and she still manages to do it all. So I'm very inspired. And some of her ideas and advice aren't the worst. That you either do at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's also very important. And I know you do this with your kids. It's important to be able to have a wind down. And mine is a wind down. You know, it turned into a vodka down. It's a VD. I don't know. Like, what do you all think? Leave me a comment. I am so curious. Do you think at the end of the day that Kris Jenner is a mastermind and we're all just a part of her game? Is she someone to look up to? Would you trust her? That kind of circles back to my question at the very beginning. She's had so many affairs and cheated on her partners. Does that factor into her integrity and character in life, in business? What are your thoughts? I would love to hear them. Every day I woke up and walked into my office and asked myself, what move do you need to make today? It was very calculated. My business decisions and strategies were very intentional, definite, and planned to the nth degree. Class dismissed. Okay, it is time for a kitty palette cleanser. Unfortunately, I don't have them here at the studio with me, but here is some kitty B rolls. So be sure to grab your very own brand new Petty University apparel from the Dropout Collection. The link is in the description and pinned in the comments. Ah, I'm so excited. Your fall, winter, and holiday items are finally here. Thank you for being patient with me while I put all of this together. We got brand new premium ridiculous ridiculously soft hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, the best joggers I've ever worn in my life, dad hats, beanies, a zip up, a varsity jacket. You got options, child. And remember, I designed this entire collection to pair perfectly together so that you can mix and match different pieces and build your very own matching set to suit your personality. I want you to have the freedom to be able to do that. And please be sure to tag me in your outfit post so that I can share you on Instagram Instagram and Twitter and in these future docs. I cannot wait to see all the cute outfits you create. I just love seeing your images so much. And just thank you again for being a part of the Petty University community, my wonderful fellow Petties, and for just watching these docs week after week and supporting me. As a small woman-owned business, your support truly blows me away and means so much to me. So just thank you with all of my heart. A couple of Twitter shout outs from my last doc about the parallels of Ned Fulmer and the toxic alpha male manosphere. That dog is absolutely fascinating and hilarious if you haven't seen it. First shout out goes to Neo Pugler who says, as insightful as ever, it will never cease to amaze me the audacity of the play on power some men create. History has changed so that we can all stand on the same playing field and misogyny and control isn't what women accept anymore. And the second shout out goes to Cove Blue who says, swoops coming for all the toxicity. If you wanna be my next Twitter shout out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpankyV linked below and retweet this video right here. And again, also hit me up on Instagram linked in the description. That's where I post most often and respond to a lot of DMs. Be sure to download the free Upside app and use code SWOOP to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more and earn that money, honey. I know I've said this a hundred times, but like we don't have to allow toxic celebrities to influence our lives. At, at the end of the day, viewers and fans, you know us, we have the power to decide who is in a position of influencing the masses, who is a celebrity and who isn't, based on what we consume. Now, while there are certainly worse people in the world than Kris Jenner or Kim or even Kanye, sometimes what I think can be most dangerous are what I call 
the sleeper cells, the covert manipulators. You know, with a fraudulent church here, a scam there, an audience manipulation over there, people like Kris Jenner continue to slide their fingers into every pie in society, just kind of twisting and manipulating the guts of it, bending it to whatever shape they need just to make more money. Allegedly. <laughs> Don't come for me, Chris. But the thing that gets me is there's never any actual transparency with these people. Like everything is curated, everything is reshaped, and nothing is ever what meets the eye. I mean, I could do a three hour long documentary on the lies this entire family has told about their cosmetic procedures. And like, normally I don't care what procedure somebody gets, but when it misleads young and vulnerable audiences who just want to be like the Kardashian Jenners, it can become dangerous. And here I am two docs into my series and this is literally just the tip of the iceberg. It gets way worse from here, but I'm still left with the same question. Why do so many people care about this family? Like why do so many people keep up with the Kardashians? You know, from a psychological standpoint, what is it about the way Chris and friends operate that people sometimes obsessively support regardless of the false facade that they present themselves as. Now, we're gonna dig into that as we go further into the series because, you know, a bitch has questions. You know me, okay? I'm gonna find the answers. But, you know, as always, when all is said and done, stay ready, stay petty, class dismissed. Swoop!